What up, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Peace Kemp. Welcome to the best half hour of your entire Tuesday. You know what time it is. It's time to get into his course. And my squad would be T-Mac. Hola. Chili Will. Gracias, gracias, amigos. Let's do this. Yo, let's do this, man. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 in the New King James says this. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they measure themselves by themselves, are comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. Uh-huh. Comparing yourself with someone else is not smart, is what the word says. So I guess we're going to go the not wise because we're doing some mad comparison today. <laughs> Wisdom out the door. There you go, bro. So listen, ESPN ranked the top 10 NBA players of all time. And here's who they have. All right. Number 10, the big Aristotle, Shaquille O'Neal. I'm assuming he was ranked in the top 10 because of his size and his ability to dominate, along with his um, agility at that size. Uh, we haven't seen a player like that ever uh, since that guy came or before that guy came. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm assuming he's number 10. Okay. At number nine, you have the Black Mamba, Kobe Bean Bryant. With all of his statistics and everything, he was, you know, his highlights of his career is an 81-point game, you know, 60 points in his final game. He played 20 seasons in the league, MVP in 208. But, you know, I think part of, You know, it's hard to say why he's on there because there's a bunch of players. I don't know yeah. if some of this is emotions. Yeah. And L.A., big market, you know, Hollywood. I think some of that plays into it as well. Right. Because, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll just, we'll move on. <laughs> Number eight, the big fundamentals. Tim Duncan. Timmy D. Perhaps... He is conceived or perceived as the most boring player that gives you the works <laughs> <laughs> every night in the history of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Because Tim didn't do much of anything flashy. But when you look up, I'm like, did this cat just give me 35, 20 rebounds, 8 assists. And 4 blocks. And 4 blocks. Mm -hmm. And possibly a couple steals. Major production. Man. So I understand why he's on there. Here's one that I think should have been higher than where it was, okay. than where he is, and that is the original LB, Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. Now, Larry Bird was not just one of the most amazing shooters and, and could possibly consider the best power forward or small forward to ever play in the league. Mm -hmm. But he was also on the Mount Rushmore of trash talk. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Big Mouth League. That could back it up, though, too. Right, right. I still remember at the, um, the NBA All-Star, I don't remember what year it was, that he was shooting in a three-point contest. Mm -hmm. He walks in the locker room with his warm-ups on and says, uh, which one of y'all coming in second? <laughs> Actually, he said, which one of you a-holes is right. coming in second? <laughs> right. <laughs> I never took off his warm-up jacket and won it. And won. Never even took He's like, listen, man, I don't even need to get warm for you cats. Yeah, yeah, Larry, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do some rearranging of, of this list once you get all the way through it. So I'm going to, you know, cut my commentary a little bit short until we oh, get to the we got edited plenty. list. Right. <laughs> Number six, the Big Dipper, Wilt Chamberlain, was truly ahead of his time. His numbers, including a 100-point game, 
also averaged 50 points a game for an entire season. And in that same season, he averaged 27.2 rebounds in that same season where he averaged 50 plus. Why is that? Why isn't he not the top two? It, it, because there's a disproportionate, inordinate amount of respect that's given to the number of championships that somebody has won. When you talk about individual players, that's the combination of their strength, size, skill, ability. Individually, he is one of the top players ever. Ever. Mm-hmm. Number five. The magic one. Magic. Irvin Magic Johnson. I get why they're saying he was, he's there because he changed and revolutionized the point guard. Yeah, yeah. Never have we seen a point guard with that much size, six foot nine, be able to handle the ball, and was really a winner too. And the NBA at that particular time when he came in, him and Berg came in at the same time, it goes back a year before they came into the league when they were playing in the college championship where you had Michigan State versus Indiana State, Larry Bird's alma mater. Larry Bird's team, I believe, came into that game undefeated, too, on the year. Right. And he, I think, got consensus player of the year that year after averaging 30-plus points. So Larry Bird has been a legend for a while now. The thing about Magic that I really appreciate is that the whole Showtime piece, he revolutionized the position and was a winner and took that no winning attitude and acumen to the L.A. Lakers and made Showtime must-see TV. Uh, and to add to that, he also revolutionized the game where the fast break, mm -hmm. which was considered only if necessary or if possible, became, if you don't do it, you will get ran out the yeah. gym. It became a staple style of play. Right, just like the uh, triangle offense, mm -hmm. you know, all that. Magic speeded up the game and made the game, like you said, showtime, must-see TV, entertaining, mm -hmm. not just a sporting event, but in entertainment. All those no-look uh, passes. I mean, he, 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 similar to Tiger Woods coming into the golf arena and bringing a whole generation, entire demographic, because you had a couple of you know, handful of, I'll say, African-Americans that played golf, but not in the numbers they started playing golf after Tiger Woods came in. Same thing with Magic, playing street ball, everybody played 21 hustle, or you ran a full court, you know, whatever region you're in, Milwaukee, Illinois, New York, California, whatever, you played outdoor basketball. I don't remember cats trying to do no-look passes and all that kind of stuff until Magic came and was right. bringing all of that fire to the court. I think the only guy who was doing that uh, consistently before Magic was Pistol Pete. Mm -hmm. So let, let's keep moving on. Yes, sir. Number four. All right. Bill Russell. The greatest winner in basketball history. Mm -hmm. Russell claimed 11 titles in 13 years. Yeah, I mean... 11 titles, and he only played 13 years, and he got 11 titles in them 13 years. Yeah, the thing about Bill Russell, Bill Russell is probably the greatest winner. If we're talking about just winner, you know, he got enough rings for all his fingers and a toe. So that is unprecedented. The other thing that he doesn't really, a lot of, well... Going back to individual, I'm going to keep this a little short because I got a, 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 we got a revamp list that we got to get to as well. Right. The thing about Bill Russell with the winning, that puts him in every conversation. Just, every. Just joke of, I ain't got to say nothing. I just do this. Right. You see the rings and my toe. That's all you need to see. So you know, right. every conversation. What doesn't often get mentioned, though, is that he played with a number of other Hall of Famers. I mean, Sam Jones, John Havlicek. I mean, just right. it was some guys on that team. Right. That whole Boston team. Bob Cousy. Bob Cousy. So it wasn't like he had to carry the load by himself. And if anybody had some help, it was Bill Russell. Now, that does not say that he isn't still the greatest champion because all of his teammates might not have all the championships that he does have. I'm just saying we're talking about individual talent, individual players if you got some help joker that might knock off some of your points because you didn't have to do as much because you got some help that joker also earned five mvps 
and 11 All-NBA selections. <laughs> His resume is still solid. Solid as a rock. Mm -hmm. Number three, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Wow. All-time scoring leader. In the NBA. History. In the history of the NBA, this is the all-time scoring leader. Right. Six MVPs. Those are called receipts for those of y'all who don't know. That's right. what a receipt is. Right. Proof, Joker, that I got what I'm saying I got. Right. Go ahead, sir. Six MVPs. Mm. 19 all-star appearances. 19. Six championships. Mm. What else is it? 15 all-NBA teams. Ten first team all selections. What, what else you got to say? Let me just add this little bit to the extra sayage. While this is college, I'm going to give some stats for. It still adds to the legend of who this guy is, the captain. When he was in college at UCLA, which was the Bill Russell of team basketball with Coach Wooden having won, I think, 10 championships in 12 seasons, Kareem won three of them in a row. Freshmen were not eligible at the time of him playing. And right. also the slam dunk. When Joe, oh, man, he dunked it and won. He dunked on them. They banned the dunk during Kareem's college career because he was dunking on people all the time. So if you have a whole rule that the game has to make because of you, you up near the top two of all-time great of whatever you're doing. In addition to that, his team had like a 77-game win streak during his time as well. He won three championships. I think it was the tournament MVP in all three of those all three. championships. And he had won, I think, a couple high school championships. We went to Power Memorial, I think, out yeah. in New York as well. High school, college, pro, and all-time leading scorer in the NBA. That's the coup d'etat or cherry on top. He got a case yeah. to make, too, because he got plenty receipts. Right. And we, we could add to his college resume if we wanted to. We could talk about we'll, we'll go into that when we revamp. Yes, sir. Number two, the little LJ. Mm -hmm. LeBron James. Bron Bron. Bron Bron. The one who people really love to hate. It's just a mm -hmm. whole lot of man. You 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 almost get as much hate array for LeBron as you get those that respect his game. And to me, some of that hater rage because jokers that is hating know in the back of their mind that this is a phenomenal player. Now, we all can have our favorite player, just a matter of opinion. We all have them. But when you look at his body of work, he's one of the guys that I think is going to be more appreciated once he leaves the game because you won't see the gaping hole that he's been filling until he's gone. Right. And number one. And now. <laughs> Michael Jeffrey Last Dance Jordan mm -hmm. That guy We don't even have to go into his stats Right But looking at this There, there, there are some real discrepancies for me Okay In this First of all, there's no way Wilt Chamberlain should be down at six Agreed uh, 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 He should be top three at the very least. Mm -hmm. Same with Bill Russell. Top one or two. Let me say this to both those points. My edited list. Yeah, why don't you give me that? I have tied for number one. One A, one B. Whatever your fancy is, you can flip a coin, call it heads, tails, any, many, money, mo, however you want to make the decision. One A, one B. Both of them got number one in front of their letter, though. It's an alphanumeric ranking. Right. I got Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan, I lived, I saw both of them play old enough to have been able to witness it. Kareem more of his pro career than his college career, mm -hmm. but his body of work speaks for itself. He also brought my Milwaukee Bucks, their one and only championship, my team with the big old Oscar Robertson, so he has sentimental value as well. Right. So Michael Jordan, I remember we were just starting to get cable television. Right. When he came into the league and I was going to a high school here in the Milwaukee area called Wauwatosa West and his second year he broke his foot and a guy Mike Marotz 
classmate of mine. I remember him trying to tease me, saying, your guy got injured last night. You hear about it? And I was like, what are you talking about? Your guy, Michael Jordan, he broke his foot. So I remember him missing most of that season, the second season in the league, came right. back. That's when he dropped the 63 on Boston, Boston in the playoffs. And Larry Bird, also on this list, called him God in basketball shoes. Right. You call when somebody calls you God in basketball shoes. That's more receipts. You're even colder if somebody cold tells you that. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. So, so, Michael Jordan, I remember just the euphoria I had as a fan watching him and the impact he had on my life. All the high school players wanted to wear number 23. All everybody wanted to wear their wristband up on the forearm because before it was all the way right. on the wrist where it's supposed to be. Right. You wanted to get your, used to have the high uh, 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 tube, tube socks, oh, tube, tube socks, socks right. that had the, a color on them, the red or, or right. blue or whatever. When Mike came, his socks didn't come higher than his shin. So what you could do, if you couldn't find no up to your shin socks, you would tuck the top part of your socks in inside to make them look like they were only shin high. Right. That's called impact emulation, wanting to be like Mike. And watching him play. There's take another him, big one you missed. The short length. The, the, the short length went from the tight Speedos almost right. to the baggy, you know, hip hop almost. You know right. what I'm saying? What it do? Better on us up way, on the way to Brooklyn. So he, he brought all of that to the game. Right. And his rookie year, he averaged 28.3 mm -hmm. coming into the league, this highfalutin guy. I think he had just got player of the year at North Carolina, came out a year right. early as a junior. So I'm just trying to say that what he did, I witnessed last second shots when he hit the shot against Cleveland. Cleveland had won like 60 games that year. It was no chance, no way they were supposed to win. Mm -hmm. And he willed them to that win going into the championships, hitting last-second shots, even in the regular season. Now, he didn't hit all of the last-second shots that he attempted, but the ones that he did were powerful. And even on the ones that he missed, let me just say this piece. He said, when somebody asked, well, hey, well, how do you deal with the adversity of you taking the last-second shot and it doesn't go in? Does that make you feel bad when you don't hit everything you shoot? His response was, well, hey, no, it doesn't, because I never lose. I only learn. Right. So even that kind of philosophical insight really kind of speaks, you know, for itself. The last thing I'll say, I'll let you go ahead and get a word in edgewise. No, go ahead. We know about the shoes. The shoes is its own thing now spread out into a whole athletic apparel line, Jordan brand or whatever. But what he was able to do, man, in terms of galvanizing an entire generation of folks and, and industry industry to, uh, folks and industry and transcendent color you right. are exactly right yeah. and and he was able to do that man and and so so for me it's like okay michael jordan is he got to be in the consideration for it because the impact is still being felt it still reverberates now and i witnessed him doing some stuff you know what i'm saying and yeah. it was it was powerful you know to add to his Folklore. There you go. I was watching a uh, interview by Bill Bellamy. Okay, comedian. Yeah. Uh huh. And Bill Bellamy was talking about how he was shooting. I forgot what movie it was. And Michael Jordan was shooting. He was on. He was on uh, lot A. Michael Jordan was on lot B. Okay, shooting Space Jam. Maybe? Shooting Space Jam. Okay. And he said Michael Jordan had a dome. On lot B. <laughs> on that dome, he had, a, of course, a basketball court, showers, food, a massage therapist, trainers, all of that, weight room, mm -hmm. all of that. So Mike would have different players from L.A., mm. pros and college players, come and play. Yeah. So he could who, who has in their contract, while I'm shooting... I think it's called like unlimited play or something like that. That he can play whenever he wants, as long as he wow. wants, while he's shooting the movie. So Bill Bellamy says he sees Mike. Mike's, hey man, you know I'm shooting Space Jam. He said, yeah, I heard. He said, man, why don't you come over and, shoot and play ball with me? Bill was like, you know, what do you say when Michael Jordan asks you to come and play? <laughs> Let me go get my shoes. Right. So Bill was like, yeah, I'm playing. He's like, you know, I play a little ball. Mm hmm. So he said he got out there. He said there was players like Tyus Edney wow. from, from uh, UCLA, UCLA uh -huh. who, was, 
who, you know, who won a championship there. Mm -hmm. Guys like that, Ty Sedney, uh, he said Alonzo Mourning was there. A bunch of L.A. players and... Professional caliber players. Profes Ty Sedney also played in the league. Yes, sir. But he played college. So it was college and pro players that were there. And so he said, he got to play. Bill Bellamy said he was playing with them. He said, all of a sudden, the more they played, the speed went from playground to college to pro. And he said, when, he, when the speed went to pro, he realized this game is far beyond what I can play. That <laughs> I'm a professional comedian, not right. a professional basketball player. He said, but he was on Mike's team. Mm. He said, so this one game they're playing, Tyus Edney came down, fake Mike out so tough that Mike jumped over to the side <laughs> and Tyus Edney laid it up. He said, they took the ball out and Mike said, give me the blankety blank ball. <laughs> and went down and dunked on the whole thing. And proceeded to score the next nine points in a row. <laughs> It was like yeah. somebody said, you shouldn't have woke him up. Right, right. It's, uh, uh, another piece of his legend, that, that competitive fire. And because he came in the league at a time where we were not quite at the internet level that we are now, right. but like I said, cable television was coming into homes. I remember, uh, it, 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 let me finish that point. What it did was it helped more eyeballs see him. See who he was. You know what I'm saying? Because we got WGN is a Chicago station. We live in right. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we weren't able to get WGN prior to maybe Mike's first or second year in the league. When right. we got our cable package, WGN was right. one of the stations. So people said, what's the significance of that? Well, this Chicago station. So all the Chicago's home games, I got a chance to see because they came on WGN. So, they also played the away games too. Didn't they play all their games? Yeah, they they I know they played the home ones. I know for, yeah, for, all for the sure. homes were there. And the other games, you know, would come on ESPN or TBS, TNT right. or whatever. We were able to go ahead and watch those, but we got a chance to see an inordinate amount of Mike yeah. because we had, you know, his home portal in our house. And to watch him play, it was it was it was simply phenomenal. That competitive nature that you talked about, this refuse to lose when he got cut from his high school basketball team, all of that kind of putting up 200 jumpers a day, he has earned his spot. And I think the biggest thing for me when we talk about, you know, just impact an individual player, up until Mike came, the NBA always talked about uh, the center. Being right. you build a team around the center. You right. get a big big man in the post, back to the basket. Right. That's what you build a team around. Right. When Mike came, it made GM, general managers, begin to say, you know what? We might just need to build our team around the best player that we have, exactly. regardless of position. Mike was able to do that as well. Real quick, I'm just going to go through my list. We can come back to whatever ones we want to talk. Right, so I just right, want right. to give you my just edited list. So I got the 1A, 1B, alphanumeric... Uh, thing with Michael and Kareem, flip whoever you want to do. I have me personally. This this my list. I don't believe this, this. Make your list. Send it in to us and we'll compare. But this my list. LeBron is next to me. Mm -hmm. After that, I had a little bit of this another you can do a flip flop. Kobe Bryant and Wilt Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. you, you can you can flip them in position. The rest of my list includes Magic, then Shaq then Larry Bird, I removed actually Tim Duncan off the list and put Oscar Robertson on there, who was the first guy to average a triple-double for a season. And he had been doing triple-doubles before they even began to record them. So he right. has also been a phenomenal player that because people might not have seen, he doesn't get the full props he deserves. And next to him, my last player rounding out the list is Bill Russell. Best, mm -hmm. Hey, he got 11 championships. He, any list that's made, he on there somewhere automatically. He has a lifetime spot on whoever's making lists right. as it relates to basketball. Or you ought not be making any lists because you don't know what you're talking about if he ain't on there right. somewhere. He got 11 championships. Hush. 11 in 13 years, which means... Only two years that he, he was in the league did he not win a championship. Come on, man. Come on. He on there somewhere. You can put him wherever you want to, any, many, many more again. You but know, he has to be on the but list. If you, but if you have to say, okay, if it's based upon championships. He's number one. 
he, 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 he's the GOAT. Matter of fact, he might be one and two if you're talking about right. strictly championships. But again, because we're talking he, about individual cause, players. Because he almost has double anybody else's championships. Yes, sir. And those that he have doubled of, who are my one and two, Kareem and Mike with six apiece, <laughs> Not only does he have double them jokers, the reason why people put them near or at the top of their list is by the number of the championships that he made. He right. got six championships. He got six championships. Well, my man got double. So if we start talking about championships, right. he's the GOAT. End of discussion. But if that's not the end of discussion, that means we have to give more consideration to more than just championships, which is what we're right. trying to do here. That's called a comprehensive analysis, right. which is what we're trying to do here. You know, the, the, I think the one thing that always amazed me about Bill was he had the ability to alter the game in such a way that whoever he was holding wasn't getting their numbers that night. Mm -hmm. And he was a key cog on a dynasty. Yeah, yeah. A dynasty, not, not, not. See. When you're saying... 11 championships, that's a dynasty. You know, and what's crazy is they're talking about the three-peat. Mm -hmm. How many repeats did he do? Yeah, he did a three-peat like three times. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You know, so that, that to me says a whole lot about his status should be 1A, 1A, I mean, just me. Oh, you got the... The one A, one B, and one C? Because yes. when you add yes. this piece to it, because you're, you're going someplace, Pastor Skip, he also, mind you, now this is America, a place where we've had a history of racial polarity, right. particularly between right. blacks and whites. No, we got other races, Latinos, Asian, but I ain't talking about them. Most of the racial animus was between black folks and white folks. Bill Russell was doing what he was doing in Boston. Right. Still today, known as one of the most racist, segregated cities. You know, hey, I, hey I'm, I'm, we just, we keeping it 100 here. Right. in America as it relates to race. So he was a black man who read our back, made a, a, a decision. That I'm going to let this guy do his thing, and I'm going to give him some support, and he's going to catch some backlash. Not only did he win those championships, but right. after he got finished playing, he became, I believe, the first black coach in Boston's history, Not too, maybe that. in the NBA. But he was a player coach. He was a player coach at that. Yeah. I mean, so this guy has some stuff on the court, off the court. So when you talk about impact, he's had a 360-degree level of impact. Right. And he was a part of social justice. Yes, sir. Yes, too. sir. Wasn't afraid to speak out about, you know, racial injustice and social right. injustice and put his money where his mouth is. He was a grown man that happened to play basketball. Right. You know, so great list. Great show. Thanks for hanging with us. Listen, we'll see you next week right here. Joy 1340 AM 98.7 FM. And for those of y'all who just listening to us, if you want to see who we are, you can always go to YouTube, Into His Courts. You can see us there, see this show. Until next week, 7, 7 to 7.30 every Tuesday, right here at Joy 1348 AM 98.7 FM. Until next week, peace.